Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper. On a recent Alien Invasion episode, I used a Faraday trash can to protect some of my electronic devices. Now I got a lot of questions about... What are you doing? I told you to stay in my childhood. I, I told you to stay in my childhood. The power of Fred compels you. The power of Fred compels you. The power of Fred compels you. The power of Fred... Right, so today we're working on our own sort of homemade DIY Faraday cages, uh, or Faraday trash can. Uh, now, I should say, first off, this is not an idea that I invented myself. I saw some YouTube video on it. I, you know, I don't remember who did it. Uh, but uh, I picked up the idea, and I, there's some adaptations of my own that I put in here. Uh, but this, you know, I don't get credit for this. Very simple way to create a, a Faraday cage because someone else thought of it. Uh, there is one really great video that kind of goes into the sort of the back end of, you know, how this works best and why it works and everything like that. I'm going to put a link somewhere here so you can check that video out. It's a really well done video. Uh, they don't really get into, I don't think they really got into how to make a Faraday trash can. They were just sort of testing their, you know, usefulness and everything. But that's a great video to check out if you're interested. Uh, so, but we're going to talk about how to actually make one because, uh, it's not as simple as just having a trash can uh, because, you know, it's nice to have a little liner in here and I'm going to talk about kind of how to put that together. Uh, and even the liner is a little tricky because uh, a trash can, as you know, it's not a cylinder. It is, uh, I, actually, I had to look this up, it's a frustum. It is a cone. You know, if these sides kept going up eventually way up there, they'd come to a point. It's a cone with the top cut off, which the technical word for that is a frustum. I had to look that up. So. We need to make a frustum shaped uh, interior liner for it to have everything so it's not touching the outside surface. I don't know if that's 100% uh, necessary, that stuff doesn't touch the outside surface. I found some uh, sources that suggested it was, some suggested it wasn't, but I think it's kind of nice. It's a little bit of padding, and uh, if there is the off chance that it is helpful in terms of protecting it from you know, electrical current going over the surface of the the trash can, then you know, why not? Why not do that? So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. I've got a very large piece of cardboard here, and the first step in doing this is to get this uh, section. Like I said, it's not a cylinder, uh, so it's going to have a bit of a curve to it as we um, as we figure out how to make this interior liner. Uh, and the best way that I found to do that is to just sort of roll the trash can around. Now this trash can has seams on both sides. Here's one seam here and one thing on this side. And I'm gonna use these as sort of markers for myself. Now, I'm gonna place the trash can down so that one of the seams is facing straight down. There we go. And right at one end of the seam, I'm gonna put a little mark. And then on the bottom side, at the other end of the seam, I'm gonna put another mark. So now, I've got these two marks here. And I'm gonna use a straight edge, which today we're using a lightsaber because, uh, well, I found that rulers uh, work okay for this, but I found that lightsabers actually work a little bit better in terms of being a straight edge for specifically the task of creating an interior liner for a Faraday trash can. So we're going to use our lightsaber as a straight edge, and I'm going to make a line right across there. So that is going to be one end of our interior insert. We'll roll the trash can right back. It should line up just like it was before, and it looks like it, it is. And what we're going to do is do two rolls of the trash can, and while we do it, I'm going to take this crayon and trace the path that the trash can is rolling in. Now we've done one complete, uh, one half revolution at this point. This bottom seam is what had been there, so it's come to the top. And we're going to continue until this bottom seam is facing straight down again. You want to do the best job you can to have it just roll in a natural sort of curved pattern the way that it wants to roll and my bottom is uh, that that center line seam has gotten down again so I'm gonna make a little mark there and now what I'll do is I'm gonna roll it back and then I'm gonna scribe the bottom line here but first I'm gonna make a little mark right at the bottom seam so we can make that straight edge line again and here it goes back and we want to have it follow the exact same path as it did before and what I'll do is just kind of keep checking up here to make sure that the top lid is following the same 
path it had the previous time. Now this whole thing doesn't have to be perfect, but the closer to perfect that you get it, uh, the less sort of futzing you have to do later on. All right, we're coming back and I'm checking and it's still, it's, it's drifting a little bit. Just correct it a little. And there we go. So you can see now we have one line here. There's going to be one line here and then this nice curved arc path there. Again, using the lightsaber, the most effective way to make a straight line, specifically in terms of creating a Faraday trash can liner. All right, and the other piece that we're going to need to get out of here is the piece for the bottom right in here. We're creating this curved section right now, but we also want a piece for the bottom. So you want to make sure you have some cardboard left over for that, and I see cardboard right here. Now I'm going to, this is pretty obvious, just trace the bottom of the trash can like that. Now obviously, as I'm tracing this, I'm tracing the outside surface of the trash can. I'm using a big ass fat crayon and everything. So this circle that I've drawn here is larger than the circle that is going to be at the bottom of here. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to draw a circle on the inside, maybe taking off, say, half an inch or so. You can always take off more later, but I'm just going to guess. I'm going to remove about a half an inch. And we're going to be doing something similar to this as well, but we're going to do that once we get it into the the Faraday trash can. Now, what we're about to do here is what they call in the industry a one-shot deal, uh, because I only have one piece of cardboard, so if I mess this up, I can't do another take. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to do my best to, you know, just make this all work. I, I like using serrated knives for cutting through cardboard. I think it works really well. A saw would also work well. Obviously, if you are using a serrated knife or a saw or anything like that, you're gonna wanna wear Full Kevlar gloves, chain mail, uh, a suit of armor, definitely safety goggles, uh, and possibly a welder's mask, just for your own personal safety. I'm going to be uh, flying without those today uh, because I'm, I want to risk my life, and, and me doing this is really dangerous. So, But if you do this, obviously you want to be taking every possible precaution that makes sense to you. So here we go. I think I should fast forward through this part. Okay, and we're back. So that worked out pretty well. What we've got here is this brown rainbow arc that's going to get uh, wrapped around the inside, and we've got the bottom piece. Now, as you can see, I already this is my already completed trash can, but we can kind of lay the stuff right on the inside here. Uh, but obviously, this is going to be even a little smaller on the inside because I'm already taking up room with this stuff. So I'll take this and set it down. Make sure it fits in the bottom, and it fits in pretty well. As you can kind of not see because it's all cardboard in there anyway. But this fits right in there very well. If there's a little gap around the edges, it's no big deal because really all you're trying to do is create a spacer. Uh, so we're going to uh, put this down in there and then there'll be some, uh, I'm going to use uh, duct tape to kind of connect everything together later. So that fits in there pretty well. And then the next thing is, is this guy. And this is a little tricky because as you know, cardboard has uh, these little ribs that go down it and it wants to bend in a certain direction and we're gonna be bending it in a direction that it doesn't necessarily wanna bend in. So what I learned to do uh, for this is to kinda use the, the outside of the trash can to kinda train it at least once. It's not gonna make it work perfectly when it goes in, but it'll, it'll kinda break its spirit so that it'll uh, be a little bit more agreeable. So we're gonna, I'm gonna hold one side on the edge of the trash can here and sort of run it around like that. Again, just, just want to break its spirit. All right, so it gets sort of roughly that shape. I'm going to take this piece out because, uh, well, no, no, I should, be, I, should, I should keep it in there. I should keep it. I was going to take it out because I'm not really actually going to tape anything in, but the way you would do it is put the bottom in first because this part is going to kind of hold the bottom in. So now that we've got it sort of busted into shape, we can set that in there. And what you'll see is it roughly fits the space there. It sticks out a little bit, and I mentioned we we're going to have to do trimming on this piece, uh, and we'll get to that in a little, a little bit. But right now, it kind of fits in there. I'm, I'm kind of pushing around the corners, just getting it to, to go out as, as best you can. And as you, as you can see, on the back side here is the seam. Now what I'm going to do is take that crayon again, 
and just make a mark right on that line. And then what we'll do is take a mark and go all around the whole top here. And as you can imagine, we are figuring out what we need to trim. All right, so we'll pull it up. So now, this was the shape it was in, when it was inside there. And this little section here is extra that we don't really need in there. Now we can leave it on there and I'm just going to because it's not really a big deal. But if you wanted to, you could trim right along this line and then when you put this inside, you know it'll match right up and you can take those two edges there. But it really doesn't matter, you can leave it on there. But what you do need to do is remove this extra section on the top here. And the reason for that is, is that you need to be able to put the lid down on the trash can later on. Uh, or it wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be effective at all. So we're gonna do another cut right here. I think we'll fast forward through this as well. All right, and we're back again. I was thinking as I was cutting that, I think I might have cut on the wrong side of the line. We'll see. And uh, may need to trim a little bit more, or I may not. The important thing though is that the trash can lid goes down. All right. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. And we're just all mushing it out into the edges. And there you go. Uh, the next step for this would be to take some uh, duct tape, and I'm not gonna do this step, because, I mean, you know how to use duct tape. Uh, is just run some duct tape down here, uh, run some duct tape around the outside edge. One thing that I found that was kind of helpful was to run some duct tape on the, so on the face of this that is uh, you know, being overlapped here. So you'd run some duct tape here first, and that t tends to kind of lock the cardboard right into the, uh, into the trash can itself. That was the reason I wasn't able to remove this insert that I had from earlier is because I'd had this, this is all secured down to the trash can. So, whoa, you get this in here. Uh, secure down one side of it, bring the rest around, tape down the bottom. And again, all you need to do is just maintain a gap. So as long as you, uh, you basically have all the cardboard there and there's no huge spaces or anything like that. You're going to be putting tape in and, you know, things aren't going to be falling through the tape because duct tape is nice and strong. And that gets you secured on this step. That's, uh, that's the majority of the work. The next step is with your lid. And you can see I've already got it going on here. The way that these trash can lids work is that usually the, uh, the handle kind of punctures through and that makes holes up here. So to, uh, to solve that issue of having holes right in the top of your trash can, you can take some metallic tape and just cut off pieces and put some uh, pieces of tape over those holes and everything. Now I, I layered this up with a couple pieces because uh, every time you pick up the handle, the handle wiggles a little bit, it's got some sharp edges down in here, and I wanted to make sure that uh, you know, the tape didn't tear through. An even better idea, I suppose, might be to actually put some duct tape down over, the, uh, over those little sharp edges kind of build that up so it's a nice soft little pad and then put the me metallic tape around that. But the key is, is you want to make sure that the metallic tape is larger than the duct tape pieces or whatever pads you have over those little sharp sections uh, because you want to have continuous conductivity over the whole surface. Once you are done with this, you load it up with whatever you're going to put into your Faraday cage. I'm going to take this piece out because it's not taped down. It's not totally, uh, you know, behaving at the moment. But you want to put anything you have in here. One thing that I have liked to, to do is to uh, try to get the interior piece out. Come on, Neil. Is it, is it just not going to come out? Oh, there we go. Okay. One thing that I like to do is to actually make a, uh, some shelves. So I can put some things in the bottom and then put a shelf space in. Uh, I, I use these shelves. So th some things go into the bottom, then put in a shelf space. This is from a pizza box. I made a little hole in the middle so I could drop it right in. Uh, then put some more things in, then put another shelf in, and then some more things in. Obviously, if you're ever going to go into this, you want to put the things that you never really need to grab except in a dire emergency at the bottom, and then put more useful things, uh, things you might want to grab more frequently at the top, and, uh, and, and, uh, and kind of uh, approach it that way. Uh, once you get everything in there, you take your lid and put it down, and to some extent, you could consider yourself done. Now, if you saw the alien invasion episode, and if you haven't, I'll 
put a link around here somewhere so you can check it out. Uh, if you saw that episode, you would have known that I'd mentioned that these cans have been tested to be far more effective if you seal up the edge. Now they have a pretty good seal, just being, you know, having the, the lid put down, but if you can seal them up, all the better. Now you can use copper tape, and I guess that is kind of the best uh, way you could do it, like a copper metallic tape. Uh, but in the testing of the, the video I mentioned earlier with that man that was doing all the, the, the testing, he said that aluminum tape in his test seemed just about as effective as copper tape and it is way, way, way less expensive. So what you wanna do is take copper tape and then run it all the way around the band. Now, obviously once you tape one of these up, it's a real pain in the ass to get into. You're gonna destroy all your tape and you'll have to retape it every time you go in. So if you are gonna do that, you're probably gonna to wanna to only put it things in here that you're not really gonna to wanna to go and grab very frequently or ever. Just a real emergency stash. And I recommend having two of these. One for you know that real emergency you don't want anything to mess with it kind of stash. You tape that one up and then have another one for things that you might want to have a little bit of protection for just in the off chance that, you know, who the hell knows. It's not just, you know, uh, weaponized EMPs and coronal mass ejections and things like that. There are all sorts of other, you know, disturbances, lightning strikes, things of that nature that can send, you know, electricity going all over the place that a little bit of shielding is kind of helpful. For, for that, uh, I will oftentimes put my backup hard drives in something uh, that uh, does not have the tape on it, just because I go in and out and I just know I would not keep up with the tape situation, but it offers it a little bit of protection so that you have something. It's kind of similar to the Mylar bags, the anti-static bags that hard drives come in, and this is this is one. And I, I will take these and I'll put them things in these bags and then put them inside there, and I just figured it, it offers a little bit of additional protection. Now, I am not at all a electrical engineer and I don't have any expertise in this. What I'm relaying to you is the best information that I was able to find as a layperson. And my father is an engineer. He knows all about electricity. I've had every opportunity in the world to learn about this stuff, but it is just always kind of baffled me a little bit. Uh, you know, I did all the wiring on my own house. I can, if someone teaches me a basic task to do when it comes to electricity, I can manage that. But in terms of the theory, I'm not a scientist and I don't get that. So what I'm relaying to you is the best information that I felt that I was able to find from what seemed to me to be the most reliable sources. So if you're interested in making your own Faraday trash can, you know, just as a kind of an emergency sort of a backup, a, just a what if kind of thing, it's really not that big a deal. Trash cans don't cost very much. This cardboard I got in the mail, some, I think I was getting large food uh, storage containers. Uh, and I just, you know, cardboard's useful, so I saved it. So it doesn't really have to cost you very much. And in the right or the wrong sort of situation, having done something like this might prove very valuable to you and you might be thanking yourself for having done it. So that's it. Give it a try, try it out yourself. And, uh, you know, if there ever is an alien invasion and they EMP the whole planet and your Faraday cage does not work, you have the right to complain to me. That's it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.